Hi everybody, in this video I want to talk about an awesome feature that Zoom provides called breakout rooms. And you'll see that button right down here once you're in a Zoom session. I'm in a session right now, I've got three students and I want to make use of breakout rooms. I'm going to show you how to do that. Before I do, let's talk about when and where you might want to use this. One thing that we all do in the classroom all the time is we will talk a little bit and then we all understand education is best when students then get a chance to, to discuss. If they're not doing the work, if they're not doing the discourse, if it's all me, we know that the amount of learning that's happening is greatly diminished in class. So to get out of this rut of me always doing direct instruction over uh, Zoom, um, I would recommend that you use breakout rooms to put your students in small groups. When would you use it? Well, anytime you would normally do a turn to an elbow partner and discuss thing, you can use a breakout room for that. But you can also use it to put students in small groups and let them do a little bit of work together. So you might uh, group your students up and then say, hey, I want you guys to go out and do one of the assignments or one of the, the math practice problems that we've put in classroom for today. Um, room one, you're doing problem one. Room two, you're doing problem two, so on and so forth. You let them work it out for a couple of minutes. You bring everybody back and then you have a discussion about what they did. So anytime you might want to put students in small groups, or you might want to let them discuss or do work together, breakout rooms is what you want to use for this. So we recommend it. Give it a shot. It's going to be awesome for you. Here's how you're going to do it. If you want to facilitate a breakout room, you're going to click this breakout room button over here. Students don't see this portion right now. They just see the regular screen just like uh, they would if I were hosting a meeting. So I can decide how many breakout rooms I want. Right now, I just have one. If I want two rooms, you'll see that it's going to do two rooms with one to two participants per room. If I do three rooms, there's going to be exactly one person in each room. So if it's time for them to just work independently, I might want as many rooms as I have students. So they can just work independently and I can go check in on each one of their rooms and give a little bit of feedback or check in with each student as I'm doing it. For today, let's go with two rooms since I have three students in here. My next choice is do I want to assign the rooms automatically, which means students just randomly get put in rooms, or do I want to do some manual groupings? So automatically is easy. You'll just click create rooms and it'll automatically put your students in there. If you want to group them manually, you click this and then you can click create rooms. So let's start with automatically. I'm going to click create rooms and you'll see, boom, we got breakout room number one, breakout room two. Breakout room one has student one and three in it. Breakout room two has student two in it. So it did all this work for me. You'll notice over here, if I go, oh, student one and three, that's not a great combination. I just need to move one of these students. I can take student one and I can move that student to breakout room two. Again, the rooms haven't launched yet. This is just me getting things set up. Students are standing by, maybe they're working on something on their computer on their own, waiting for me to launch the breakout rooms. Or if I decide, you know what, I need to do a student exchange because I've got everything balanced and I just want to swap this student for this student, we can do that. We'll click exchange over here and we'll exchange student one and student three and boom, they're swapped over here. Okay, so this is what it looks like if you do the automated one. If you do the manual assign, then you get these two rooms and you get a little button over here where you get to pick which students are going to be in each room. So over here, you'll notice for room two, students two and three are in it. If I take these check marks off, you'll notice that nobody has been assigned to any rooms. And so if you did the manual assign, this is what it would look like. Two rooms, now assign your students. Student one's going to be in there. Students two and three will be in there. Okay, so that's all you need to do. If you're now ready to launch these rooms, you click the open all rooms button. And as soon as you do this, all the students will get a pop up on their screen that says you have been invited to join a breakout room. Now, none of my students have accepted that so far. They're all just still hanging out over here in the main room. You can see nobody has moved yet. But let me turn over here and let me have some of my students join these different rooms. And you'll notice I just clicked it from two of the students. So student one and student two both jumped into their breakout rooms. You'll notice over here, student one is in there. I've got the green. Student two is also in there. Student three is not joined. Student three maybe is away from their computer right now, or maybe they have a private question for me that they want to ask before they go to the breakout room. But I can always see where the students are at any point. Okay, so I just clicked that button for student three and student three is now in that room. So you'll notice I'm over here in the main room and there are no students here with me. They're all in these breakout rooms. Now, what can a student do in a breakout room? They can turn their webcam on or off. They can turn their mic on or off. So if I sent them out to have a discussion, they all unmute their mic. They start having discussions. It's awesome, we hope. 
they can also do screen shares in these breakout rooms. So I could say, hey, one of you needs to share your screen in the breakout room, pull up the math problem that we're working on today, pull up the grammar exercise that we're discussing, and then I want all of you guys to work through and come up with what some good answers for this would be. Or I need one of you to share your screen as a whiteboard. You guys do all of the work out on the whiteboard, and then I'm gonna jump around and I'm gonna see everybody's room and see what it looks like. So students are doing work. What do you now do as a teacher? Well, I want to mention really quickly that when we're recording in Zoom, it's still only recording whatever I'm looking at as a teacher. So right now, this recording would just have me in the main room by myself. It is not doing a recording of any of those breakout rooms. If I go join one of those breakout rooms, the recording will switch, and now part of my recording will be whatever's happening in room one. So the way we love using this is you put the students in the room, you let them get started, give them a second to get going and to organize it without you there so that there's a little bit of responsibility on their part. And then go drop in and check on each one of them and see how it's going. So I can click this join button over here. And when I do click join on my screen, it will allow me to pop into breakout room number one. So you'll see my main screen goes away and I jump in over here. Remember, this is the room that just had student one in it. So I can uh, really quickly see how they're doing. I can let them ask me questions. I can give them a little bit of feedback. I can share my screen in here. I can see whatever they're sharing on their screen. It's a great tool. All right, so I'm done with breakout room one. I wanna go back now to the main room. I'm gonna do that by going to the leave room button over here. Let's click this. Let's leave the breakout room. And this is gonna take us back to the main session. So now I'm back in the main session and I can go back over here to my breakout room menu and then I can pick uh, breakout room two. That's where I'm going to go now. So let's go ahead and join breakout room two. And we can see what students are doing in here. So students two and three are in here. I just popped in as the teacher. I can see everything that they're doing. And this is a good way for me to kind of keep tabs on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this breakout room. And I'm going to let them keep working for a couple more minutes. They have a little bit more that they need to finish out. And while they're doing that, let's take a look at some of our additional options here. When I click breakout, when I click breakout rooms and I open this thing up, you can see these are all in progress right now. One option I have down here is to broadcast a message to all. So if I click this, I can type a message. You should be halfway through. Keep or I on the clock. Okay, so if I click this, all of my students will now get a little pop-up message on their screen that sees uh, what I just did without having to jump into every single one of those rooms. So that's kind of a nice feature. All right, what if now I wanna move some students around? I can do this. I can take student three and I can send them over to breakout room number one really quick. It doesn't send them um, like instantaneously. It takes a little second and then it moves that student over to that room. And so I can reconfigure um, these things at any point. Now, what controls do students have on their screens? Students also have a leave room button. So at any point, a student on their own device could click the leave room button. And if they click leave room, they can leave their breakout room and they can come back to the main room. So you might see students doing this every once in a while. If they have a question for me or if they send like a, a runner over to check in with me, um, you might see them come back to the main room and then I can answer their question. But you always can see exactly where those students are. Now, can student one go into breakout room two? No, I have control over which room they can go into. So student one only has the ability to um, go into that, that breakout room and then come back to this main room. If I wanna send this student back over there, I can. Well, let's see, I can move them back to that room. I can move them back to breakout room one, and then that student can choose to go back in that room if they would like to. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna close all of these breakout rooms. So the way that you do that is with this red button over here, close all rooms. And then all students on their screen will get this message that says all breakout rooms will close in 55 seconds. And it's gonna be counting that down. So this is a good way to um, kind of notify them, hey, you got to wrap up your work, and it gives them that 60 seconds to wrap up their work. Okay, so I just ended it early and brought everybody back. Let's now talk about some of your other options in here, because when you go to establish these breakout rooms, you'll notice before you open the rooms, you have this options button right down here. If you click this, you'll notice that you get these different things. Move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. I can turn that on or off. 
allow participants to return to the main session at any time. You can turn that on or off, but you got to do it before you create those rooms. Breakout rooms close automatically after you can set a time limit. So there's a maximum time they can be in the breakout rooms. Um, you also have the ability to turn a countdown on or off. So if you just want to bring them back instantaneously, you can do that by turning this off. Or if you go 60 seconds is way too long, you can decrease that and just kind of give them a 10 second heads up. So all of those options are available before you open the rooms or after you close the rooms, you can go back. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, go up to these rooms and I wanna show you a couple other features. Breakout room one is the name by default. You can give these custom names though. So if you wanted to put your, room, your uh, students in different groups and name them differently, you just click rename and do that. Or if you ever wanted to, to remove a room, you can press this delete button and that will delete those breakout rooms. So if I delete all of the rooms and I go back to breakout rooms, we get this same thing that we had at the beginning, which is, hey, create two rooms. And let me show you what it looks like if we pick manually, when you click create rooms, then you get this. Your two rooms are created. They don't have any custom names yet. And you would then assign all the students manually into each one of the rooms. So that's it, breakout rooms, lots of potential for you, a great tool for distance learning to really engage our students. We all know that engagement is tough in distance learning. It's especially tough if I'm just doing direct instruction all the time. Um, you know, Think about it from the student's perspective, we would all gloss over if somebody was just talking to us all the time. So we recommend putting students in breakout rooms, letting them discuss things, let them work out things together, let them practice, and then bring them all back to the room. Uh, to the main room, and then you can finalize and, uh, and kind of conclude any of your sessions. All right, we hope that video was helpful, and we hope you got a lot out of it. Thanks.